What's good, y'all? your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we gotta talk about what happened on this episode of Monday Night Raw and what everyone's most likely gonna be talking about all tonight and going in tomorrow and the rest of the week. We finally have the appearance of Uncle Howdy once again. They have been teasing this for months with QR codes every week on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, there was always a different QR code. They have really been pushing this. And we all knew from the Bray documentary that they wanted to continue this. Like they were they were teasing it then at the end of the documentary that they're gonna be continuing on this this uh this story um in the memory of Bray and continuing it on with the Uncle Howdy character. And we finally Got him back on Monday Night Raw with some new friends. And I will say this. They had been leading up to it last week. They said we're, we're appearing on this week's show. They said last week they were going to appear on this week's show. And there was going to be a massacre. Now, a lot of people were speculating that, you know, during the main event, you had Jey Uso, Rey Mysterio, and Finn Balor in a triple threat match to see who's going to qualify for uh, one of the spots in the Money in the Bank uh, ladder match. And a lot of people thought maybe one of them were going to get attacked at the end of the match. And a lot of people definitely thought if Jay was to win, which he did, he would be one of the people to get attacked. Because you guys remember, Jay did say he had taken over the Fireflies. That's what Jay had said. So it's very interesting that he said that. And I'm not sure if they're going to revisit that. I hope they do. Because, I mean, that's what he said. He took over the Fireflies. And I'm pretty sure Uncle Howdy would feel some type of way about that. But that wasn't the case. The lights dimmed. Everything turned off. Everybody put on their flash on their phone. You see nothing but fog in the entrance ramp area. And then you see uh, the infamous door that Bray had came through. And it was it was just such a cool moment because... Once the door opened up, it it really it really hits you like this is the brainchild of Bray Wyatt. This is one of his creations, pretty sure one of his ideas. And you know, it sucks that he's not with us to see it, but hopefully he can look down and 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 see that. And apparently, a lot of y'all were showing even on Twitter uh, throughout the show there was different references to um, the Firefly Funhouse characters being in the show. In the background. I didn't even realize that until I checked Twitter. So they was really a part of the show throughout the show. And you see the door open. You see the light. But you see someone crawling. And one of the rumored individuals that's in the group that they have now is um, Nikki Cross. And it looked like it was Nikki Cross. You could see some woman crawling on the ground. And it looked like Nikki Cross, but she had a mask over her face. And... She's crawling next to a lantern. And then she tells the camera to point. She points the camera to the back. So the camera follows to the back. And then you see a whole bunch of JAG securities just knocked out. And one of the guys turn around. And it looks like maybe. I'm trying to tell from the color of his beard. I believe Eric Rowan was supposed to be one of the people that's in this group. So. And you see people knocked out. Jay Security's knocked out. It's carnage. Then you go back to Gorilla. And everybody, it seems like in Gorilla, got KO'd. Like they got sent to the upper room or something. Like everyone in Gorilla position was destroyed. I don't know if Triple H got out of there beforehand. But everybody back there was packed up. Screen monitors was glitching and everything. And then you see somebody one of the officials there's blood on the wall where he's laying at so they're not afraid to it's, it turns into a horror movie and then you see another character with the mask on you don't know who it is but you see another character with a mask on and some people are speculating that it could be dexter loomis uh um what's the there's another wrestler that a lot of people are saying joe gacy could be one of the people that's part of this faction and then as you cut from what well, as the camera pans away from them, they go back behind Gorilla, and then you see some more security look like they packed up in the fog, and then you see a Chad Gable, but like he's bleeding from the side of his head, but he's knocked out. 
That was a crazy moment. Crowd chanting, holy shit, to see that. So Chad Gable got packed up somehow. Rest in peace to Chad Gable or get him some medical attention. However you want to say this, Chad Gable got packed up. You see another member and then you see Uncle Howdy in the distance, in the background, coming to the foreground with the light shining behind him. And as he's walking through all the carnage, everyone's following him. The camera's following all the these characters. They walk right back out to a sea of fireflies, crowd going crazy. And then you see them all pose together with the, with the lantern and everybody. And then he ends up blowing out the lantern. And it was just a, such a cool visual to see all of them together looking very creepy, very ominous. I don't know what's about to happen on Monday Night Raw, but I, this was a great a re-debut in a sense because we've seen uncle howdy before with bray but this was cool to see because of how they did it they've been teasing it and they finally delivered and i enjoyed it that was fun i love that it was very creepy it was a massacre backstage and i loved it so the question is what's gonna happen who is uncle howdy in this group going to target we may see who they may end up targeting going forward on uh at money in the bank but because we did see them attack chad gable and i want to know if chad gable is going to say anything about this people need to say something about this we will see also we got to talk about uh drew mcintyre or drew quintentire drew was done i thought he was going to crash out but his crash out consists of him quitting he gets to the ring crowns chen cm punk and he couldn't even he, he couldn't he couldn't even get the words out of what he wanted to say. He was just so done. He was fed up. And he said, you know what? Screw WWE. I quit. And my boy quit. Dropped the mic and walked backstage. Uh, they come back from commercial break. Triple H is trying to reason with him. And Drew's like, I heard what you said about CM Punk. Because I think on the press conference, um, Triple H was talking glowingly about CM Punk. So he's like, I heard what you said about CM Punk. He's fooling you too or whatever. I'm done. Adam Pierce is trying to get him to stay. And Drew said, no, I'm done. I quit. I didn't know we were going to get two individuals quitting this past weekend, this Clash at the Castle weekend. We already had AJ Styles say he quit. And now we had Drew McIntyre added to the list to say he quit. And then apparently he's deleted. He's deactivated his Twitter and his Instagram, all his social medias. I love what they're doing here because you know, if he may have quit, but it's not over. CM Punk's going to be in Chicago. I am willing to bet Drew, the crash out tour will begin in Chicago. I'm willing to bet the crash out tour. And we just getting started. We're just getting started. It's, it's setting in. Let, let it's going to, it's going to cook. I can't wait. Can't wait. And then also, we got to talk about this whole Liv Morgan, Dominic Mysterio. They're still still going at it. My boy Dom still folding on the regular. Apparently, early in the show, he was looking for his cowboy vest, his purple cowboy vest. Couldn't find it. Well, guess what? Liv had it. She had it the entire time. And um, there was a situation where Dominic's at the ring um, and... Liv comes down to ringside and you see she got the vest on and she walking up to him seductively. She puts her hands on him. Dom, he's already folding. There's nothing he could do there. But that's when, um, what's her name? Zelina Vegas. I said Vegas. <laughs> Zelina Vega. <laughs> I don't know why. Zelina, man. Called her Zelina Vegas. Zelina uh ends up uh attacking attacking um Lil Morgan. They've been having a back and forth on social media. They've been having their issues for the past couple of weeks. So Zelina Vega ends up attacking her and you know that's how that situation transpired. Um then we get go to a situation in the back where Dom is still wanting this particular cowboy vest and he passes a hallway, he looks down and he sees Liv doing this. I'm like, oh it's over. He's folding. So he walks over there because he's folding. And she's like, he's like, hey, man, I need to get my vest back. And she's like, oh, oh, you want your vest? OK, that's fine. You can have your vest. Just take it off if you're not scared. I'm like, oh, my God. 
the footage is real. So, of course, of course, he starts to unzip it. And that's when Damien Priest walks around. He's like, hey, what you doing? Stop that. <laughs> Stop it, Dom. Get out of here, bro. <laughs> so he ends up taking up the vest or whatnot. And then he leaves. And uh, Damien Priest is like, man, leave Dominic alone. He doesn't want you. And he's like, Liv's like, are you sure Dominic doesn't want me? Are you sure about that? Basically, like, Dom hasn't said no either. Dom's trying to fight it, but the footage is real. It's okay. It's okay, Dom. It happens to the best of us. But, yeah, this was a fun Raw, man. Uh, I love what they're doing with this Liv Dominic story. We just know when Rhea gets back, it's over. There's going to be a murder. It may be a murder of Dominic and Liv. Who knows? But I love it, and I can't wait to see how that plays out. I love what they're doing with Drew. <laughs> Drew saying he quit. It ain't over. He's going to do something crash out worthy, and it may happen on this episode of Friday Night SmackDown. So I can't wait to see that. And also, obviously, the Uncle Howdy stuff. That was super cool. Love what they did there. Great way to get them back, uh, get them back on television in a prominent way. Very, very creepy. Definitely horror movie vibes. They It was a massacre backstage, and I love that, man. So comment down below. Let me know, did y'all enjoy this episode of Monday Night Raw? How did y'all like the return of Uncle Howdy, man? But I appreciate all the love and support y'all have shown on the channel. Road to 50 k and I'm still going to be the YouTube person champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.